Hello everyone, this is the second uh, episode of the Founders Interview by S4S. Uh, S4S is one of the student pillars of Community for Learning and Innovation. And what we try to do is improve and innovate education on the campus of um, Erasmus University through helping uh, or through supporting partnerships and initiatives. Uh, like some of the ones you might know, ETC, um, Touring Society, Liversity, for example. Uh, today I have here my friend Matt, who's actually the founder of um, Liversity. And we're going to talk about Liversity and uh, his ambitions. So uh, thank you for being here today, Matt. Thank you for inviting me. And so uh, tell us about uh, a little bit about yourself, about Liversity and uh, how it all came about. All right. Um, so hello, everyone. Um, yeah, so my name is Matt. I'm coming from Slovakia. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm currently uh, finishing my master's at Erasmus University as uh, at educational psychology. So it's like master's in educational psychology. And Liversity is some sort of like my student project, a student passion project that started um, now more than one and a half year ago, like in November, I believe 2018. Yeah. Uh, and that somehow evolved into a bigger and bigger project. Uh, and now it's actually become also part of my job uh, at the university to manage this project on a bigger scale. Uh, so it's almost uh, like a dream come true that I'm able to work on something that I consider very important, which is providing uh, soft skills or like this essential 21st century skills that we all need. And somehow we don't get it in formal education at this point. Definitely, definitely, yeah. So, um, tell us about uh, tell us a little bit about what Liversity does, what the courses it offers. I know one of the main big things is public speaking, right? Um, but I know there's a plethora of uh, of courses now. It evolved somehow. So tell us a little bit about the the options people have. Uh, yeah, so our main goal, or like our vision is to provide, as I mentioned, this 21st century soft skills for students, uh, especially for Erasmus University students for free and uh, to everyone, oh, sorry, that is available to, uh, to join. Uh, so currently we have six different courses uh, that aim to d different soft skills that uh, students themselves find very, um, very essential. Uh, we usually base and open new courses based on a student interest, so we always ask what kind of skill you would like to improve, but you don't currently have the options at the university. Uh, so currently, as you mentioned, our biggest course is public speaking, uh, which was a course that I started very first project one and a half year ago. Uh, it was just two classes, 14 students in total. Uh, and because of the huge interest, we always had like double amount of applications for every single slot in our class. We kept growing and there was the, this, this was a course that drove, uh, drive the whole evolution of diversity. Uh, now we also expanded this course for advanced public speaking, which more deals about how to prepare uh, a speech, how to write it down, and also how to speak on a camera. Uh, then we have more uh, different type of communication skills. So we have an improvisational, uh, improvisational theater or introduction to improvisational theater, which really helps to bring the creative communication, uh, whether nonverbal or verbal, in people. Then we have debating and persuasion skills. Uh, so this is based on how do you build an argument? How do you refute other arguments? How do you uh, negotiate? Uh, then leadership skill or leadership academy. Uh, this one is also like, I would say like second most popular course. Uh, and this one tackles different aspects of leadership from personal leadership. So how do you actually start by managing yourself, your time, your energy, uh, your, your schedule? And then how do you, once you master yourself, how do you master others? How do you lead a team? How do you inspire? How do you motivate? Uh, so that's something that we tackle in this course. And uh, let me see. The last course that we uh, that we have is stress and time management. So as a student, uh, especially very, even now during this skill. situation, sorry. Very useful skill to have. Yeah, indeed. Um, so the main goal of this course is to bring students together that maybe I feel a bit overwhelmed or under the stress and provide them with different tools and report week by week to see how they are able to implement these tools. Like, how do you do with procrastination? How do you force yourself to do something that you're supposed to do now, but you just uh, cannot? <laughs> Sorry? Uh, it, uh, I, need just... to, I need to sign up for this course for sure. <laughs> Indeed. Um, oh. So those are some of the, the main courses we have right now. But of course, we are planning to, uh, to open a new one. So that, but it's something I guess we're going to talk about later. Cool, cool. And I was also wondering, so how did you... Uh... 
come up with the name Liver City? What was the how did that came about? Because was it originally public speaking? Uh, yeah, so we started under the name Erasmus Public Speaking Academy because uh, first half year it was just public speaking courses. Um, but as we saw the success and yeah, literally over I think almost 200 students that applied for those courses, uh, but we had only like 30 or 40 positions at the moment. Uh, like we always ask the question, what other skills you are interested in? And there was a lot of interest in other courses. Uh, so I was thinking how to how to expand it, and then I start talking with different student associations. So the way how we usually design our courses or develop our courses is usually with help of either student that is good at that particular skill or student association that already tackles it. Uh, so for example, the first one that I approached was uh, ISEC and Extraordinary Life, uh, because they both tackle the concept of leadership, how to step up, uh, how to uh, how to manage yourself or man manage others. Uh, so we talked and we realized that that's something we can do together. Uh, so I can help build them such a course and they can help deliver this course. Um, so then after we talked, I had extra course to launch. Plus then I had also talked with a wild theater uh, and they were very excited to do improvisational course with us. So we had suddenly three courses and I couldn't keep the name Erasmus Public Speaking Academy because it was just not about that anymore. Uh, so I just left this name as the name of the course and I was thinking of what can be the overarching the name for the whole thing. And uh, yeah, I'm very bad with coming up with names. Uh, so I, it, it's like difficult to decide which one is the best, which one sounds best. So I come up with probably like 20 different options. I asked a couple of people and th the final decision was kind of random because I had to make a proposal or I had to present the, this project somewhere and I was like, ah, I have to pick. So I just picked the one that I don't know, looked, looked the best at the moment. So it was kind of spontaneous decision. But uh, th the true goal of the name is that those skills, soft skills are like very essential for life. So some people call them also like life skills and versity is kind of like a short for university. So what the name is supposed to symbolize is this university or the place where you can just go and develop the skills that are essential for succeeding in your life. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I, I do think that uh, these skills are really valuable. And it's. Uh, I also wanted to ask you about that. If you think that's something uh, the educational system in general fa fails to fails to deliver, fails to uh, really teach kids and even students at the higher like uh, higher ages. Mm, so yeah. So I was wondering about what's your what's your opinion on that? Do you think that's something where mm. educational system just failed? Yeah, very good question. Uh... I'm not sure if I would call it a failure. Like in, in sense, depends what we're gonna as society define what is the goal of educational system. I think this is something that's not necessarily clear. It used to be that educational system was meant to train uh, productive workers for the factories uh, and uh, the simple companies. But now, as our society massively changed in like last decade or two, like with internet and jobs that used to be before are not valid anymore. The skills are changing from. Uh, literally from year to year that are essential. Uh, and s simple education system didn't, didn't adapt it to that yet. It still kind of prepares, especially elementary and high school for these like simple uh, simple jobs where you have to come from eight uh, till five, have a 15 minute lunch break uh, or whatever. Um, but those skills that, uh, yeah, that we we're discussing, I think are really missing right now in educational system. Uh, I believe actually that the university where we are doing these courses right now, it's already too late. Like if if person is 20 or 22, they should already be able to speak in front of a the public. They should be able to lead a small project team very efficiently. So I believe those are the skills that should be taught starting from primary school and massively focus on in high school. Uh, so in university, people can just jump in ready to uh, lead their project teams, ready to present, ready to debate and argue. Uh, I think that would be a very nice thing to see, but obviously we don't have power over that. Uh, sorry? That would be ideal, but that's probably pretty pretty far from from reality, like you say. Exactly. So now this is more like a patching of what uh, what is not there. You're saving the our generation. Oh, at least the people that uh, they that's... need it. <laughs> yeah. Or apply. And so, uh, what? Who who do you think? Do you think there's a specific type of people your courses focus on, or is it just for anyone who's interested in ad like? improving their um, their presentation skills or their public appearance? Mm. Uh, well, our different courses have like different, so like a target or ide ideal audience or ideal participants. It's not 100% restricted to that. Uh, 
So for example, in our basic public speaking courses, sometimes we have people that are already quite experienced in uh, public speaking, but they still want to maybe like change the approach how they do public speaking mm. or still improve themselves. That's, that was one of the reasons why we created advanced public speaking class to already provide like more, uh, more focus for those people. Um, but generally, uh, I think our main target audience is the students that uh, see that they really need this skill, either for future or even right now, maybe at the university, they need to lead some small project team or uh, they're feeling stressed or over, uh, overwhelmed with all the tasks and assignments, or perhaps they have to do the... Oh, I'm gesturing too much. <laughs> too much uh, skills. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> gesturing skills. Or perhaps they have to deliver a presentation, right, in front of a classroom, which we have to do uh, from yeah. time to time at the campus as well. And that's very stressful. And they want to have some way how to make this experience, uh, yeah, m not necessarily more pleasurable, but for them to uh, experience it in a better way and receive actually a better grade at the end as well. No, for sure. Because if you, if you enjoy it and if you do like presenting, you obviously, you obviously perform much better, right, than if you... Exactly. Closingly to someone who's just not enjoying it and is like stressed out. So, but the interesting thing about the public speaking is that if you look at the surveys, uh, yeah, it depends where you look, but it's anywhere between like fifty to eighty percent of people experience this fear quite strongly when they when they speak in front of a public. Uh, and from what I experienced myself, as I was one one person like that as well in my past, that I just couldn't talk in in front of more than two people, um, then. Yeah, it's it's quite uh, petrifying to have this fear because it just really you avoid so many opportunities. You you're not going to apply for a certain job because you have to maybe present something. It's great for sure. Yeah, I even have sometimes because we also ask a lot of questions for students when they're applying. Like, how is this fear affecting them, or what is the biggest challenge that they experience in public speaking? And uh, often I saw even responses that didn't apply for certain elective course, even though they were interested in that, but because they had to do a presentation at the end, so they decided to apply for something else. Mm -hmm. And I think that's quite uh, um, yeah, something that's, that makes me like, oh, we need to do something about that. Yeah, that's a shame. That's a shame. So that's good that you're doing the Lifeversity courses. So I wanted to ask you, in terms of public speaking and uh, in terms of the skills, can you tell me some of the like practical skills or some of the basic stuff you... Um, you teach in the course like what are the small tricks or things you can do how to practice like what are the small yeah basic mm. concepts yeah for sure uh well the, the public speaking course is kind of based on my experience uh so as i as i mentioned briefly i, I was absolutely terrified of speaking from a uh, in front of public um it was just something i just couldn't do so i decided to just really work on myself i read tons of books that didn't work uh, I tried many different courses, some of them paid. Um, it kind of worked, but not not necessarily, because I sometimes received mixed advice, sometimes not necessarily best advice. Like, you need to prepare your speech, write it down word by word, practice for hours, and then deliver it. But it's just, it's just like, it was so, so painful. So then um, I tried to more uh, looking for alternative approaches or also like experimenting myself. Uh, I always consider myself like a very creative person. Uh, and I think like the what sort of like break me was when I discovered the improvisational speeches. So those are when you are asked to uh, stand in front of the people and speak without preparation. Yeah. Absolutely petrifying. I was like, oh my God, I cannot do this. But what you realize once you overcome this initial block is that your brain kind of figures it out and starts talking and it actually makes more sense than you think. Uh, and after trying like multiple of those, uh, I started to use this sort of like method also for my regular speeches or presentations that I had to deliver. And I realized that if yeah, I don't script or don't write exactly what I have to say, I'm able to be much more energetic, uh, much more better speaker, and kind of naturally without actually focusing yeah, too much. I agree. I think for me, it's similar. You're just more free and more natural. And you're not constrained by whatever you're, like, you're supposed to say because you just say what you feel you're, like you're supposed to say. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like unleashes like your true, as you would, I always say like, as you would talk to your friend in a bar yeah. or in a cafe, like you don't, you're not going to pull up the script. But this is the, I think, number one problem that students in our classes and generally what I experienced students have is that somehow, I'm not sure if it's the fault of the educational system or maybe like society or where they get the, the influence, but I had the same thing. I thought that if I'm delivering a speech or presentation, I have to write it and I have to memorize it. It takes hours and you are very likely to freeze because if yeah. you lose the next sentence, your brain cannot figure it out. You freeze and what to say. Yeah, that's true. 
So is one of the one of the things I always heard is that you're when you're speaking when you're giving like a public speech, uh, you're supposed to focus on like each individual people you talk to or, or you're like you, you're in the audience, and that's like one of the tricks or one of the things. Is that, is that true? Is that something you teach or you uh, you acknowledge? Uh, I would say it depends on how big the audience is. Like I mean, mm -hmm. if you're 500 people, then good luck at trying to look into uh, every single person. Uh, but generally, yes, if you have like small audience, you want to look into every person, yeah. uh, try to look at them at least for a while. So not just like, doo -doo 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 -doo, but spend yeah, yeah. maybe five seconds. Uh, so the person feels addressed to. If you have bigger audience, good idea is to chunk it into different parts. So you look in the front left, back left, middle, and yeah. you just look in that general direction. And because you are more far away, people will usually just consider it as you are looking at them more yeah. or less. Yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. That's good. That's good advice. Uh, I was wondering, since you, since Liveversity is obviously doing well, right? You, you said a lot of the, I think public speaking is, wasn't it even full? Uh, the, the courses when people apply, were they full? Yeah, uh, like so far, we always filled all of our courses. So that was a part of the reason why we're able to grow, uh, is that we always received much more applications that we we're able to take. Yeah. Um, so especially like for public speaking, uh, like last time, I think we had uh, 140, I believe, application. And we had like uh, 80 spots, 88 spots. Mm. Um, so what we do in that situation is uh, we also ask for the motivation uh, and we try to select then students based on the motivation to participate in the courses. That's already, that's already a sign of success where you get to choose your own participants, right? Yeah, it's like, it's actually very simple. Like you would be surprised. It, it also applies for a job position. Like how many people just write really bad motivation? Uh, so literally, like uh, out to like ten or twenty percent of people that apply for our courses, write, Why do you want to participate? What is your motivation to participate in our course? And all the thing that they write is just one sentence: I want to improve at public speaking, which is kind of <laughs> obvious because you're applying yeah, for public speaking courses. Like and so I was wondering since. Uh... Since it's doing, since Liveversity is doing so well, were you thinking about expanding it to even something new, some another course perhaps? Uh, yeah. So no, right now, oh, well, firstly, we face like, like the challenge of uh, transferring Liveversity online, as a lot of uh, associations uh, and also university does. Uh, so what we are aiming to do in the following months is to open uh, online courses. So we public speaking online, especially focus on how do you speak in front of a camera, maybe how do you create a video blog and such to make it be more relevant. Uh, and then also transfer our stress, uh, stress and time management course and leadership course to online setting. And later on, hopefully in September, once uh, the education resumes more or less to uh, uh, to physical form as well, which uh, we hope very much. Uh, but of course, the safety comes first. Uh, then we're planning to open uh, multiple multiple new courses. Uh, so the one that are currently in development is uh, public speaking and media. So we want to expand uh, our advanced public speaking class and more specialize it, how to speak on a camera, how to speak with a teleprompter, mm. how, to, uh, how to create a podcast or video blog. So that we completely focus on even on how to edit a video and to create it uh, in like a simple program. So it'd be like really for the people that want to uh, maybe become a video blogger or podcast creator or just work with the media in the future. Uh, another one is mindfulness. Uh, oh, really? So, uh, yeah, I've been in touch with a uh, yeah, very talented student. Uh, she's a mindfulness teacher. And uh, yeah, we were discussing about developing, or actually she already has a mindfulness course that we can, uh, we can adapt uh, for student setting as well. Uh, then uh, another course that I'm very interested in doing is uh, it's called uh, Creative Problem Solving. Mm. Uh, so that would involve a different ways how you can create or like solve a complex problems, but also how to start thinking creatively. Uh, because what another sort of like thing I've noticed as a common thing when I talk to students is that they think, okay, I'm not creative, I cannot draw, but I, I highly don't believe that. I believe that every single person is creative. You just need to have like right tools and mindsets how to unleash this creativity. It's kind of same as improvisation. Like once you start improvising in a public speaking situation, you're you're becoming much more confident at the end. Deep notions that they're like bad at math or bad at public speaking or bad at creative. Yeah. Right, yeah. So this is kind of like a limiting beliefs. Uh, but people realize more and more that creativity is very important because it's actually one of the soft skills as well that's getting getting pushed up, especially creative problem solving. Yeah. Because the problems that we experience as society are getting more and more complex and difficult to tackle. No, for sure. And it's also something edu educational people talk about more, more and more these days that like, 
education should focus more on critical thinking and critical problem solving, right? So I was also curious about um, since w what is your relationship with S4S and CLI, like um, our uh, our board, our team, and how does um, how do, for example, S4S or CLI help uh, diversity in what it does? Mm. Yeah, so uh, I would say like the S4S was the main reason why this project was created in the first place. Uh, so when I started here as a student, like more than one and a half year ago, like uh, September 2018, uh, I joined this uh, fair. That was like this event, like education, innovation uh, or something like that. And there was a stand with S4S. So uh, yeah, I just approached them to, to ask what they are doing. What are they? they were just starting. Uh, it was... Uh, yeah, Daniel back then, like he was the one that initiated the whole start of the S4S. So they were fairly new as well. Uh, and yeah, approached them to see like what they are doing, what, what are the possibilities. They have this nice leaflet. And, and then the idea struck to my, uh, my head because I used to do public speaking coaching uh, and also like small conferences, workshops uh, throughout my whole studies uh, in, uh, in like previous master or even in my bachelor. Uh, and now it was, huh, maybe I have a opportunity to create a course and see if that's something they would like. Mm. So I created the proposal, sent it to them. Uh, well, actually, first, uh, I, I was uh, like one, one of the main reasons why it got uh, even pushed was that I actually forgot that I, that I asked about them. And then Daniel sent me an email to remind me that, hey, do you want to still do this project? I was like, oh, yeah, let's do this. So if there would be not, not this email from Daniel uh, back then, then it would probably not happen. Mm. Uh, so I think like the, the first, what as far as really helped was just to provide this platform where I, I as a student had the ability to create this project and receive all the support that helped me to see how can I market it. And they provided me like the basic financial support to, uh, to promote it, to develop the materials and so on. So that was like very helpful because I didn't have to care about a lot of this stuff. I could focus more on the creation of the project. That's awesome. That's and later on, as we, as we have more students, uh, and I approached S4S again uh, with uh, the idea of creating more courses, since this is uh, successful, I again received like a positive response and we were jump on it and see how we can make it happen and how can we also make, since the project was bigger, it required a bit more uh, budget and resources and it's, it's just uh, happened. I was, uh, yeah, I was very happy that S4S and also CLI recognized that such a project uh, is beneficial for students. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's that's really good that this uh, is able to happen, and I think that's something remarkable also about our university that this is uh, this is even a thing because I think sometimes maybe that's something we take for granted, like all these partnerships and uh, I mean, all these associations and stuff that students really uh, have this ability and capability to start their own ideas and to do stuff that they think are missing from uh, from what the university doesn't provide, right? And exactly. so I was also I was also curious and wondering. Uh, do you think, since we both come from uh, Eastern Europe or we have like Eastern European roots, this is? Do you think this is something uh, that could ever like? Do you think you could see anything like this, uh, for example, in Eastern Europe, like that? It would be uh, university bodies giving money to students to like uh, create their own like uh, associations or ideas. I think that's. I, I personally think that's something uh, pretty special about this university and maybe even the West itself. But I was curious about what do you think about that? Mm. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I, I tried to start a similar project uh, back when I studied my bachelor in Slovakia. Uh, and it was met uh, with a quite some resistance from university. Uh, so even simple thing like the, the, the budget or finance, as you mentioned, that's something you just don't even think about it. It's not going to happen. Uh, but we wanted just like a simple thing as uh, providing us a room or like a space. Uh, and that was already... Uh, yeah, a bit more difficult that uh, that you you would imagine. They wanted to like to, to justify it. Maybe they're just like, oh, I'm not sure if this is a good idea. So uh, I mean, it, it was possible at the end. Uh, we had to charge students to participate. Uh, it, it was specifically English uh, speaking class rather than just the general public speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, it was quite a success. Like students were like very interested. But um, at the end, it's uh, after like one or two years, it failed exactly from this reason that we didn't had. A support from university and we are not able to or my actually uh, successors were not able to run it because yeah if you don't have the, the support uh, either financially or logistically it's getting more difficult to yeah. more hassle to make something like that happen yeah no for sure so yeah I, th I think the western world and also western europe just uh what i see personally is that the universities uh 
spend more money on this and spend more money on uh, educational innovation. And I think that's probably something we're going to agree on from our experience and also from your experience, um, which is a shame and which yeah. is something, uh, something we should not take for granted, I guess. Yeah, I think it's also partially about the funding because uh, as far as I'm aware, like uh, the Dutch or generally universities in the West have like much more uh, funds available from government or from other institutions. Oh, I agree. Well, in Slovakia, it's quite uh, even like the teachers themselves are underpaid. So um, that's, um, that's something to maybe... Uh, could be like a first fix to see how we can actually have a funds to even provide for such things. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, we're shifting towards the end. I'm curious about uh, what are your um, what are your outlooks for uh, for diversity for the future, and uh, where do you see yourself? Uh, where do you see yourself in five to ten years? Do you think you would still like to be do doing diversity and working on a Erasmus University campus or? You want to progress somewhere and go to a different country, and I'm just curious about that. I know you also study educational psychology, so maybe you want to do something in the sense of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll start with like the first part about uh, where I see diversity in the future. Well, I have this dream, uh, and also it's part of our vision to make sure that every student has like equal access to those uh, soft skills. Uh, is uh, I will I would like to have this type of courses more embedded into curriculum. So I would like students that participate in our courses to receive, for example, ECTS. Uh, we uh, already have sort of like a vision for the future. I uh, make sure that every single course that we have is already built to have at least 30 hours, which is a sort of like pre-commitment or a prerequisite for ECTS. So there's a possibilities with that and uh, something we're going to explore with the faculties in coming months as well, uh, whether they'll be interested or how can we make this happen or if that's actually possible to make this happen. So that'll be one of my, my dreams to make this um, almost like an embedded part of the university where students just can come and if they feel that they want to develop the skills, participate and uh, get those skills in, a, in the best possible way. Um, also with that, I would like to see a more, a bigger variety of the courses. So actually as part of the brainstorming in very early stages of this project, uh, I outlined something like, uh, I think maybe 20 in total of courses that can happen. Uh, some of them are like quite, quite wild, uh, quite, uh, quite difficult, uh, maybe to develop at this moment. But I would like to see like this, like very different skills that might be very useful for people in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, like for example, negotiating skills or, um, effective learning, how can you actually study yourself more efficiently? There are like different uh, technique in psychology or memory that you can even use to memorize stuff better or differently. Uh, so I'd like to see also like those type of like, maybe like different courses that can help not only during your studies, but also after that. Yeah. Uh, and I think more dream uh, for like a, my shortcoming future. Uh, yeah, I would like to stay working at yeah, my current place at the University of Drisbo, which we provide educational consultancy and uh, so like research as uh, yeah, I see that's I can get like a lot of insight uh, and also how to develop such educational projects to become more educational. Uh, like my passion is to see how those courses can become more engaging, more active. I think one of our advantages comparing to uh, classical curriculum courses is that we are more flexible. So if we receive feedback from students, we, we are able to apply it next, yeah. next round very, very quickly and very easily. And we're also able to do like a more uh, different exercises uh, or use the more creative approach to teaching as well. Uh, and for the, for the coming future, I would like to see maybe similar projects applying to different universities as well in the Netherlands uh, and ultimately see if, uh, yeah, we can get those skills even to high schools and start thinking more, as I mentioned before, from like bottom up. So the, you can already at the university has just people that are already fully developed on those basic skills and are able to discuss and argue and Delve into this research and critical thinking skills that are essential for university. Okay, yeah, that's that's ambitious. That's uh, that's good that you have. It seems like you have such a passion for this and that you want to follow up on this. So that's uh, good to see. And it's good to see that also S4S uh, was able to uh, to help with something so so useful in my opinion and so uh, so important and something that's obviously as we agree on is missing from the educational system or from the the curriculum itself. So yeah. Good job on this, and uh, thank you. Continue doing good work. Yeah, I think maybe if I would just like one uh, thing to to the, to the future, I think the next step would be if we figure it out, maybe here in the university or in Netherlands, 
to also bring those skills to the countries that don't have it yet. Because yeah. uh, I think there it might be even more useful, uh, no, like for example, in our countries or even in more developing countries uh, to bring uh, those, uh, those aspects as well. But that's another difficult challenge. Uh, to, uh, to no. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's the future. It has to be. <laughs> it has to be. Thank you very much, Matt. For, Thank uh, you, Miklash. Um, this is the end of the second Founders interview by S4S. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Matt. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Enjoy and keep learning.